In this video, I will show you how to install the Simulink support package for Android devices. First of all, let's open MATLAB. Go to the add-ons drop-down menu and click on Get Hardware Support Packages. Searching for Android, let's click on the Simulink support package for Android devices and install it. After going through the software license agreement, click on Accept. Clicking on Next will download the support package and the third-party packages required and install them. Now that the installation is complete, let us set up the support package now. You can choose the latest version radio button in case you already have a version of Android Studio installed. However, in my case, I am going to take you through the process of installing the different Android tools with the version that was tested with our support package. As a first step, let us download the Android Studio. Clicking on the link will take you to a web page with an archive of Android Studio releases. Agreeing to the terms, from where we can download this particular Android Studio version. In my case, I am downloading the Windows installer. I now have the file downloaded. Double clicking on it to install. Let's now go through the setup process of the Android Studio. Going to the next screen. If you plan to use Android Studio only with our support package, you can uncheck Android Virtual Device. Moving on, this is the path where Android Studio will be installed. We can copy it, it will come in handy in the later part of the setup process. Let us give this a couple of minutes to install. Now the setup is completed and we can open Android Studio. While it opens, going back to our hardware setup, we can paste in the path where Android Studio was installed and click on Verify Installation. Now that the verification is successful, we can move on to the next step. However, one thing to note is, for each release of MATLAB, the tested version of Android Studio will vary and this document here will help you identify which is the latest tested version of Android Studio. Next, we need to configure Android Studio with the required SDK platform packages and tools. Going to Android Studio, let's go to Tools and click on SDK Manager. Under SDK Platforms, ensure that Android API 32 is selected and going into SDK Tools, first of all select the Show Package Details checkbox. Ensure that version 32.0.0 is installed and moving down, ensure that the version 23.1.777.9620 is installed. Also ensure that the Android SDK platform tools are installed. Now we have ensured that we have the right versions of the SDK and the tools. Here is the file path to the Android SDK. Copy the file path and click on OK. Going back to the hardware setup, paste the path to the Android SDK and click on Verify Setup. Now that the verification is successful, let's move on to the next step. In this step, you can install the ARM compute library in case your application calls for deploying deep learning models on Android device. Clicking on this link will open a web page and download the library. I have it downloaded in this folder. Before we can proceed, we need to unpack this archive. To do that, let me open command prompt, change my current path to the path where I downloaded the library and let me enter this command to unpack this archive. Click in enter. Now that the files are unpacked, let us go into this folder and copy the file path. Going back to our hardware setup and moving on to the next screen, here we need to paste the file path that we just copied. Selecting this folder and let's click on validate. Now that the validation is successful, let's move on to the next step. This step shows you how to enable the developer options. Go to settings, scroll down and select system. And within system, select the about phone option. Scroll down and tap on the build number seven times till you see a message that says the developer mode has been enabled. So once you have the developer options enabled, let's move on to the next step. Go back to settings, scroll down and select system. Now you should be able to see a new category called developer options and selecting it, 
scrolling down under the debugging category you have USB debugging which needs to be enabled. So once you enable that let's move on to the next step. In this step let's ensure that you have a device driver installed for your Android device. In case you have a device other than a Samsung or a Google phone you can select the radio button called different device Conveniently, there's a link that takes you to a web page that provides links to device drivers of various Android device manufacturers. You can go to the relevant web page and install the device driver for your phone. Once you're done, you can click on this checkbox and move on to the next step. In this step, let us connect the Android phone to the host PC and you should see a pop-up dialog on your Android phone to allow USB debugging. Check the option to always allow from this computer and click on OK. Moving on to the next step, you should be able to see your device listed here. In my case, I have a Lenovo Android phone and I have that selected here. In case this list is empty, you can do a refresh to see if that populates your Android device here. Once the Android device is shown here, you can select the appropriate Android device and move on to the next step. In this step, we will be connecting the host PC and the Android phone to the same Wi-Fi network. So once that is done, let's move on to the next step. This is our last step wherein we'll verify the configuration of the Android device. We will be building a test model and deploying it to the Android device. Let's click on this button to install the test app and this may take a couple of minutes. Now you should be able to see an app opening on your phone and a pop-up requesting for camera permission and consequently a permission to write to your external storage. Please provide access to these permissions. Next, let us verify this installation. As you can see, the test was successful and you can see on your app which network the Android phone is connected to and the IP address of the device. Moving on to the next step, we have completed the hardware setup and clicking on finish, this opens up a documentation page showcasing all the examples that are there for this particular support package. You can go through the various examples here based on your application needs.